Welcome, everyone. Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Katoa. Uh, welcome to everyone who are joining as we speak. I see the attendee count rising, and that's such a fantastic thing that you've chosen to spend a bit of your day with us. Um, I'm going to keep the intro and housekeeping brief because, as you know, this is a lightning webinar. So, if you um, this is the first one you've joined, our lightning webinars are designed to be 15 minutes of content or less. And then we will follow that up with some time um, for Q&A. But if you've got a dash or run, have no worries. This session will be recorded and you'll be auto emailed a link to that recording um, when I publish it either later today or tomorrow sometime. So um, that way you can share it with anyone you think might find value of it if they've missed out or um, you just think it might be valuable knowledge. Um, cool. So today's lightning webinar is with Lucy and Ben from the BD Ladder. And so I'm going to hand over to them um, to introduce themselves and kick us off into our content. But before that, I remember I forgot to say, if you do have a question or comment, um, go ahead and type that into the chat and Q&A section um, of your screen, and then we'll moderate those questions at the end. Uh, but until then, I'm going to let them kick off into our content. So thanks for joining us. Hi, welcome all. Um, many of you have seen me before. I'm Ben. I'm the C CEO of BD Ladder. We're a business development and marketing consultancy focused on helping those in professional services and particularly those in the consultant engineering space. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague Lucy today. Lucy. Hi, I'm Lucy, the marketing executive here at the BD Ladder. And yeah, we're here to talk about ChatGPT for content and social, social media. So we're really excited. Let's kick off. So a quick overview of today's session. We're going to talk through some examples of how you can use ChatGPT for content creation and also for social media and the all important limitations if you do choose to use it. Awesome. But before we get into the whole chat, chat GPT and artificial intelligence and robots, why do we actually need content marketing and social media? Well, realistic, we need to spread the word. People need to know what you do. It's important to have your personal brand, your firm brand, and, and the awareness of your services out there to educate the market so we can actually tell them what we do and how we help, raise that awareness, build that recognition, all the good stuff. So content marketing and social media are now pillars of every marketing strategy. Cool. So ChatGPT, is it your new in-house content creator? Almost. The great thing about it is <laughs> it gives you inspiration. We know that when creating content, the hardest part is starting with a blank page. Um, so ChatGPT can give you something pretty decent to work with. Um, for example, Ben and I use ChatGPT frequently to help us draft articles for our website focused on business development and marketing, um, help us write LinkedIn posts to share these articles, and also some scripts for our YouTube videos. So yeah, it's great. But let's put chat GPT into practice. Now you've got some handouts there. I don't expect you to read them because some of the material is really, really long. But we went into chat GPT and looked at it and thought, how can you make this relevant and get step through some examples of how you might practically use it. So the first thing we asked it to do was write an article on New Zealand's infrastructure. And as you'll see from flicking through it, it's pretty good. It gives you where we are and what's taken up to today. And many of the projects it references, you'll actually recognize. So it's kind of a good snapshot of a potted history. It actually looks a little bit like something you might see on a Wikipedia page. And it's worth bearing that in mind because use it a little bit like Wiki Wikipedia, not necessarily a fully trusted source. <laughs> Someone's asked a question about handouts. If uh, um, Holly will um, make sure they will answer that in the chat. The next one we asked uh, ChatGPT was to write an article on how to ease congestion and improve New Zealand's infrastructure. So it started looking at a few things about smart cities, public transport, touching all the major points which you would expect, and a really good structure to how to improve infrastructure. What it lacked is those kind of case examples, those project examples, that experience, experience that all of you on the call actually bring to it. So that's really, really helpful. Then we got into asking it, how do you write an article on why creating public transport options is the key to easing congestion and improving New Zealand's infrastructure? The difference here is we asked it to formulate an argument, to give it, to form a basis in an article which promoted a certain side of the coin. 
So it started to explain why public transport is there, how it'll unlock it, how you need infrastructure, how it will look in the future, and how it eases congestion. It's a really good structure to help you get that kind of framework and a really good argument around it. But again, you'll need to put in those real life case studies. It doesn't have that kind of area. It lacks a little bit of um, nuance, which is cool. And then I got to thinking, what is one of the things that engineering firms use the most to promote their services on their websites, in their brochures, all that kind of stuff. And it's around case studies. Now, it's pretty difficult to ask ChatGPT to write a case study if we don't have your actual material. But if you have, you know, why the client needed it, what you did, what the outcome was, you can actually put that in, in bullet points and ask it to create a case study and it will give you a really, really nice draft. But we asked it to write a case study on the need for a second harbour crossing and how an engineering firm might solve this problem. So kind of a mixture of a case study and a mixture of what you would do and formulate an argument. It's actually come out with some really, really cool stuff. You can see that actually what it's suggesting there is really, really useful. So when you get the chance to read it, it'll work really, really, really well. So that is a really powerful way of doing it. And again, the more questions, the more detail you give ChatGPT, the better the answer will be, the better the framework you can utilize. Then we moved on to the next stage of what's really, really important for every individual in a firm, bios. Whether it's a website bio, bio in a bid or proposal, they can be quite tricky to write. You can take your website bio or your CV, put it into chat, TP, G, chat GPT, and I wish they'd given it a better name because it's quite a tongue twister, <laughs> and ask it to create a website bio in around 650 words. Now I pick 650 words because that's the minimum that Google wants to be able to recognize your content and actually start it ranking. So for a website purpose, you want 650 to 700 or more. So then you can cut and paste it and ask it to, and it will create a website bio. The second stage though, you can cut and paste your bio and ask it to optimize it for keywords or keyword chain. So in this case, your name is always one because you people will search for your name, so you'd want that. And maybe what you do, so civil engineer in that case. So to give you an example, we didn't want to pick anyone from random without the permission and, and embarrass them. Um, we went with me, so I get embarrassed. But we have an example of mine using my name and BD Consultant for Professional Services. So you can see it's coming out with something that's really optimized it. I think this part of the tool is really, really cool if you're doing some search engine optimization because it's very hard to authentically keep repeating the words BD Consultant or Ben Paul to be found. But ChatGPT seems to work it into the framework so it almost doesn't look false and yet it's still playing the algorithm again when you read through these bios though they are a little bit can be a little bit cheesy a little bit promotional so treat them as a framework you want to tone that down we're selling services you're selling consultant engineering services you maybe want to take some of that sales language out and just make it more applicable then we took the copy of my bio Ooh. sorry <laughs> That's okay. Uh, and ask to create a 30 to 60 second video script that you can present. This is something that I think is really cool. If you are going to have your bio on a website, having a video where you explain what you do and how you help people really brings it to life. People like the authenticity of um, video and seeing people. But it's quite hard to script it. So we asked ChatGPT and it went down to giving types of music we should have, types of stock image we might want to use, how the narrator would speak, when I would speak and what I would say. Again, quite salty, but the structure for that, that promotional video is really, really powerful. And we've used it for some of our explainer videos. It gives a good structure, which just change the language, but it, what would take me, and I'll be quite honest, half a day to try and write a good script sometimes, is, is being done in sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, really, really fast. But ChatGPT, does have content limitations. Bear in mind, it's data that it's referencing from is only taken from up to 2021, so it's out of date. It doesn't attribute sources it uses. So if there is stuff in there that's clearly come from somewhere else, they might take exception to it. Plus, we would all want to, if someone's got a framework or some policy, we'd actually really want to be able to reference that. It has limited personality, i.e. the human touch. It's trying to learn it. Um, but I still reckon I have slightly more personality than it on a good day after three coffees. But it it's there. It won't have that thing. And that makes your content, while factually correct, hard for people to engage with. We really do engage with those stories, those nuances. And weirdly, machines don't like machines. So purely AI content 
is recognized by Google as being purely AI generated content and it starts to perform poorly and it starts the website less found. The basic in it is you really get the best copywriter. Cool. So in terms of ChatGPT and social media, we've chosen to focus on LinkedIn today because we're all working with professional services, um, but the benefits are much the same. So ChatGPT can save you a bunch of time. It keeps a five minute job a five minute job because it can give you inspirations for all types of posts, short form, long form, sharing third party articles, commenting meaningfully. And it can also help you be visible by giving you good advice for hashtags to use and also how to optimize your profile. So in terms of ChatGPT in practice, we've chosen two examples for how you could use it to share content. The first being sharing someone else's content. So we took an article off Ace New Zealand's website. We copied and pasted it into ChatGPT and asked, us, asked it to just write a comment to help us share that, share this. So what it produced was something pretty general, sort of meaningful, but um, if you want it to give something that's more useful with some more opinion, you're gonna want it to be a bit more pointy. So the second thing we did was ask it to write a long form post persuading your audience about how to get a B Corp certification or why they should be B Corp certified. So that gave a bit more of an interesting answer. Um, but the one thing that you can do is take any of the posts that you want to make or are making um, and ask ChatGPT to optimize it for LinkedIn's algorithm. And the main things here are ensuring you're using the right hashtags. Um, the content is in an easy to read structure. So avoiding those long blocks of text um, and posing a question or a call to action at the end to generate engagement. So you'll see our example um, at the end there. I think it says, you know, what do you think about X, Y, Z? Let us know in the comments. The next thing you can do is not just for posting, but also to help you personalize your profile. Um, you can use ChatGPT to help you write your um, about section and your headlines. We know that it's pretty hard to talk about yourself, so you can let um, ChatGPT do the heavy lifting for you. Um, apologies, Holly, we've made an example of you. We hope you don't mind. Um, but we copy and pasted Holly's short website bio into ChatGPT and asked it to generate um, an about section that explains what Holly does and also the benefit that she can bring to the people that she works with. So transformed it into quite a compelling story. Holly, you should check it out and see if you want to use any of it. Um, and the next thing is generating a LinkedIn headline. So that's the little tagline that follows you around. Um, it's on your profile. It follows all the comments that you make. Um, again, you want that to say what you do and the value you can bring using the right sort of keywords. So taking Holly's headline, which was general manager engagement at ACE New Zealand, we asked ChatGPT to generate her 10 different options, some of them reasonable, some of them quite good, and some of them perhaps needing work. Um, but the thing is, it's inspiration. You can pick the words and the terms that you like. Our favorite one for Holly, so Holly, if you like this, feel free to use it, was empowering teams and maximizing engagement, general manager at ACE New Zealand. So yeah, have a look, Holly, and see if you want to pinch any of those words. <laughs> Lastly, um, in terms of LinkedIn, we're going to talk through the little limitations. They're very similar to what Ben has said before, in that AI content really lacks personality and the human touch and not just human touch in general but your touch if it's your profile you want to be speaking in your voice it's your personal branding platform so make sure it's you that's talking like we said before the content can be very cheesy and you'll see that in the handout there's um, quite a lot of promotional language very positive upbeat language lots of use of emojis so if you're well because you're working in professional services you just want to make sure that it's going to be right for your audience so be aware of that and the last thing to be aware of is that linkedin's algorithm can spot ai generated 
content from a mile away. So um, in order to make sure your posts perform well, you're going to want to edit them so that they sound human and natural. Oh, both click there. <laughs> so <clears throat> just summarising that, actually, there's a huge amount of benefits to ChatGPT, particularly for busy um, consulting engineers and those in the engineering business, because actually it saves you an awful amount of time. We know we have to write bios, we know we have to do case studies, we know we have to do educational material. But getting those great first drafts out is really, really tricky. So it helps you to do that really, really simply. And if you struggle with structure to your, your content, your articles, it creates a beautiful structure that you can then just build on. It does write um, accurately. So again, you can do it two ways. You can actually help it create that structure and, and use it. That, but you can get you can put back in what you've got and ask it to improve the grammar and improve the language and, and check what you've written. So it acts as that. There are other online tools like Grammarly that do that, but it's really, really powerful to know that it writes well and cleanly. And look, it can update your bios really, really well on all formats. And let's be honest, most of us don't like talking about ourselves or promoting ourselves or putting all that good stuff there. But we know that clients look at it and they do want to know who it is because after all, they're buying your services. So using it to that and getting that inspiration really, really does speed it up. But it, and that's the main point. It's free, it saves time, it helps you get stuff out more consistently, which is a key to great marketing. And this is a lightning session. So we've hit, hit the mark and done it in time. There's some supporting material there, which is which is linked to what we've done talked about today. But if you've got any questions, we'd love to hear them. I got my mic on, there's the camera. Yeah, there you um, are. Welcome back, yeah. Holly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Holly. Uh, I'm definitely gonna, you know, borrow some of the <laughs> um, suggestions, and and this actually leads into one of the questions that we've already got from Kate is, um, you know, is there a requirement to disclose if AI has been used to create content? Like, do I need to put something uh, created by Chat GPT and me? <laughs> <laughs> Currently not, but it's an interest in a moving face, and it and it varies from jurisdictions. There's a few things going on. There are a few IP cases, particularly over in the States, that are coming out where people are laying claim to content, much like they do with um, video and use of audio on YouTube and stuff. There'll be copyright claims. So there's bizarrely software going around trying to hunt out to find original material to then launch an IP claim. So it's all interlinked. Uh, and also really, really fun out of the, uh, the US. Um, Someone is taking AI to court for practicing law without a legal certificate. <laughs> wow. So really interesting to see how that one lands. Um, and they're actually using AI in their discovery work as part of the suing process of saying that AI haven't got a law certificate. Brilliant. Wow. And these are the real things going on. But but the reality is it's always good to check and, and, and run by if you're not sure. And if you've got access to in-house outflow, I would, I would recommend using it because it's a moving feast and, and it is changing. Mm -hmm. um, we're members of Marketing Association. They're excellent. You can you can call them up. So there are some, some bodies out there that can help you as well. Guidance. If yeah. you're in any way uncertain. Brilliant. Um, well, cool. So, yeah, if there are any other questions, um, as as Ben has said, he's, he's done a fantastic job in, in Lucy um, hitting our lightning webinar time frame. Um, so if you need to hop off, definitely feel free to. Like we said, this session will be recorded and made available later. If you want to stay on and ask some questions, please feel free to do so. Um, but, yeah, and I, I definitely want to encourage you. You know, this has been a very, very quick concise overview, um, but please feel free to reach out to either Ben or Lucy at the BD Ladder. They are business development and marketing professionals, and they um, have helped a number of ACE members as their clients. So if you do want to know more and you want to get some help, please feel feel, feel free to reach out to them. Um, I'll, it's not an ACE webinar if I don't also plug some other ACE events. Um, but uh, Wait, Holly, just, just, just going back to that last question, um, I think it's also there's a point of you might feel more comfortable declaring you've used it. For example, if you're doing imagery, I think um, the National Party and Christopher Luxon might have felt more comfortable if they'd announced they were using AI to create their imagery <laughs> before it was found out. Yeah. And, and, and that's an interesting point. And actually, it does create photos. And it can be really, really cool. 
Now, the most of those are paid, we didn't cover that today, but if you look at that kind of stuff, if you want to show the vision of a city in the future, say Auckland or Wellington, if certain things happen, that would be a really cool way of using AI to create those images and show people what it might look like and what it might, the city of the future might be, or the bus of the future, whatever it might be. I think when you're then, the difference is if you're then asking AI to create like some engineers on site, some fake engineers on site on the project because you haven't been there, that doesn't land well with people. And that's kind of the usage of, of, of the material there and not falling foul of it. So sometimes if you are doing it, yeah, declaring it could be useful and respected because it's a genuine authentic person knows what they're reading. Yeah. Fair enough. It's got to be decided for, you yeah. know, you individually as, as consumers of what you're going to use it for and the purpose and the intent and yeah. the potential repercussions or benefits. So, yeah. Um, yeah, brilliant. We did get another question in from John. Cool. Um, so he said that, that, yeah, LinkedIn can recognize AI, but he'd love to know a little bit more about what does perform poorly mean? <laughs> Lucy, do you want to start with that one? Yeah. Um, so in terms of, so LinkedIn's algorithm basically is the main decider of how far your post is going to travel. So how many people's news feeds is it going to end up in? Will it be your connections and their connections or will it just get seen by one or two people? So performing poorly means that LinkedIn's algorithm has blocked your post from being able to be seen. So low impressions, low reactions. Um, and low engagement. I hope that answers your question. And if Ben, if you've got anything to add, please feel free. <laughs> no, that's bang on. <laughs> nice. Um, excellent. So I think we've got a follow on question. Um, so the program can be used to create content. Who owns the IP of whatever's been created? Do, do we know or is that something to watch this space on? Uh, so <laughs> The IT, IP, I guess, would ultimately sit with ChatGPT, but there's limitations because it's trawling a database that hasn't necessarily been approved by those who put the database in place. So there is somewhat issues on there, which is why if you're using it as a kind of initial structure and fact-based thing, much like with Wikipedia, but then changing it quite a lot with your own edits, you'll be safe because you're putting your own stuff in your own IP. And if you spot things in there that you need to reference, as long as you put the reference in, so this is based on the modeling tool of X, Y, Z, whatever, or that, then then you'll be fine as, you, as much as you would. But treat it with some caution. Use it as a good uh, first drafting tool, and you could be fine. In terms of creating things like LinkedIn posts, because they're just short forms and you, you put in your own content and ask it, or an article and summarize it so I can promote this on LinkedIn, that's fine. It's just creating a summary, much as you would. There's no IP. There's no IP discretions in that. And of course, you tag the authors anyway, or whoever it might be. So you're giving credit. Yeah, pretty sensible. Yeah. Um, I see a, a question came in here about Adobe Photoshop bringing out their AI photo editing tool. But I think you um, kind of touched on that with the the, the Luxin and national example. But if you wanted to, to say more about that as a potential AI tool, Look, I, look it's, it, it, again, use it like you much so you would Photoshop in, it, in its tr true sense. You know, if I suddenly start looking like Brad Pitt, people are going to question it and, and, and be, be heavily disappointed when they meet me. Um, so, but there's always things where you can bring other stuff in and adapt photos or make them to convey the message. Um, and the degree of adaptation is, is what should be comfortable. Like right? if we're making us all all look like Adonis's, then actually that's not the world we want to portray and that's not a good, good image, for example. If we're taking a picture of a, of a site or a project that's gone wrong and making it clean on the, on, on the outside, again, not the right use of the thing, but, but using it a sensible way and using it in a way to convey messages is cool. Uh, and much might you, you like you might credit a photo, if you might want to credit this, this image has been adapted to convey this message using AI technology, perfectly fine. Excellent. All right. Well, um, I 
think we'll probably wrap up there. Um, there haven't been any new questions that have come in and, you know, we do want to honor the spirit of what the lightning yeah. webinar is. Um, but yeah, but again, you know, to our viewers online, if you do want to dive into more detail, or you want to get help with your um, social media marketing or business development, please feel free to reach out to Ben or Lucy at the BD ladder. Um, I am now posting, it hasn't formatted very well, but um, Ben is uh, coming back for ACE, and we're actually running a series of three in-person workshops um, in Auckland, Wellington, and Christchurch in the month of July. Um, and that's just kind of to, to build on some of this business development uh, foundational stuff, how to have successful client conversations. Um, so it's a really good workshop um, if you're interested in gaining more experience um, in that sector. Uh, those will be featured in next week's e-news. So if you subscribe to the ACE New Zealand e-news, those links will be in there. Um, they're not formatted very well in the chat here, but those links are there. Or as Ben said, you can just Google on Eventbrite, the BD ladder, um, and that's how to have successful client conversations. So it'd be great if we could uh, engage with you again in the future in one of these spaces. Um, if you've got an idea or anything like that you want to see Ace New Zealand cover content on from a webinar perspective, um, please feel free to reach out. And other than that, um, it was covered in the chat, but we do have some handouts. So uh, kind of to the immediate right of the chat section should be a handout section. A copy of today's slides are included in there, along with some of those chat GPT examples that Lucy and Ben were both talking about. So feel free to download those resources. Um, thanks to Ben and Lucy for providing those resources, for providing today's content. Um, and we really hope that everyone um, got something valuable out of today. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming you back to a future webinar. So other than that, I'm going to let everyone get uh, get to the rest of their day. And thank, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.